Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our C++ series. Hey there folks, what's going on? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. Wait, did I repeat myself? I, I shouldn't have done that, right? It was a waste of time and all these sort of things and you were wondering what was going on. Well, that's actually what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> this idea of not repeating yourself. And maybe you've heard of this principle. It's actually from one of my favorite books. It's called Don't Repeat Yourself or the Dry Principle. So if you will, let me go ahead and take you to one of my favorite books, The Pragmatic Programmer, 20th Anniversary Edition. This is not a sale. I don't care if you buy it, but what I would like you to do is go to the extracts and look at the chapter here on dry here, which talks about the dangers of repeating yourself in your code here. And you can already see at the top the evils of duplication. Now, maybe you're guilty of this. Maybe you've copy and pasted code from some of your project and you've run into this issue where you create errors. And maybe you've gotten a little bit wiser and written some functions and instead of copy and pasting code, you encapsulated things and made them into the function. And that was the right thing to do. That was probably the right thing to do. But what I want to talk about today is a specific area that I see often code duplication. And I myself am guilty of this, but using objects and classes and things we've been talking about, I want to talk about something known as a delegate constructor that can help us avoid repeating ourselves, as is written here. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this lesson. So just taking a look at our code, we've been writing some examples like this in the previous lessons. So I have an entity here, here's a constructor, I use my member initializer list to make sure everything's initialized to some values. Um, if I don't have this, then I have some nice defaults here, so then everything's zeroed out. And again, I can construct my object here, compile this code, run it, and everything seems to work just fine. Now, often what I might want to do, though, is some actual work in this constructor here. For example, maybe I want to actually just recompute the x position, or let's do something a little bit less interesting, and just change our name to be whatever the x and the y position are. So let's go ahead and do this to string here, x and y. And we'll go ahead and run this. And we can see that our name is just 0, 0, for whatever reason that we might want to do that. OK, but maybe that's not the right sort of default behavior that we want. So meaning that sometimes we might want to construct an entity and actually set one of these parameters here. OK, so what could we do here? Well, maybe what I want to do is create another constructor here. And again, I'll take in the name. And I'll go ahead and set the name to name, OK, from our parameter list here. OK, now the work I also need to do is, well, go into our initializer list here and perhaps change some of these values here. In fact, I can actually just go into a name, set this appropriately, and then go ahead and do the same x, 0, y, and 0, collection, I'll set to, again, null pointer, and so on. And I could get rid of this. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our name down here. And I'll go ahead and provide a string here, uh, Mike, perhaps. And will this compile? It compiles fine, and our name shows up. OK, so again, this seems fine. But maybe I want to do other types of initialization here. OK, so maybe, for instance, there is some algorithm here. Compute some algorithm, add our entity to some data structure. And then we need to go ahead and do all of this work here, OK, in our function here. OK, so let me go ahead and um, add this somewhere. OK, so you can see that we might be repeating work within our actual constructor to build things up and so on. So often what I'll see folks do is try to abstract out some of this work here. And in fact, what we could do is write an init function here, something like this. Or maybe uh, other ways that we see this is a startup function or whatever. OK, so I'm just going to leave this as init abstract out whatever you know this work that we'd have to do and just paste it in here okay and i'll spell compute right since i'm going to copy and paste this and for each of our 
and entities will run this init routine. Let me go ahead and put this down here. Init. And let's even do the uh, naming thing here in our init routine. Okay, so let's go ahead and compile this. Let's run it and maybe we get some code like this. And already we can see there's a little bit of a bug here because we wanted to do our uh, naming routine here to something else. Okay, maybe set name equal to name here. Okay, so already this code's getting a little bit weird here. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, just show us what we have here. So I'll get rid of this, right? Because we really want Mike to show up in this constructor here. And I'll go ahead and run this. And well, you know, we had to remember to call this init routine in each of our constructors here. But we were, you know, in our initialization, setting up the name to some default value. And then we're just resetting it here. And we're not taking advantage of our member initializer list. And again, on and on, there's sort of weird stuff going on. And in fact, this gets a little bit more weird if I go ahead down to our object here and maybe someone in our interface goes ahead and says, hey, maybe I'll just call this init routine here. So I run it, compile is fine. And well, all of a sudden we sort of reset our object. But OK, maybe this shouldn't be a public function here and we should rename it reset or something. Um, so our, our interface here is getting a little bit messy here when really our goal is I just want different ways to construct this entity object, OK? So again, the right thing for me to do is probably just to put all of this data here in private so it's not accessible. And well, that at least prevents me, um, let me just move this here, from calling the init function. So I should get one error here with our entity. So let me go ahead and get rid of this, and I can at least ignore or get rid of that sort of uh, improper use of the init routine here. OK, so it actually runs here. But let's talk a little bit more about this here, because I have to remember in each of my constructors to call this init routine. And again, this might be fine here, but it's a little bit messy. And what I really want to do here instead is take advantage of my other constructors, which are doing some work here. So instead of having to repeat myself, that is, for each of these member variables that I set up. Instead, what I could do is actually call a member function here. And of course, this has to be one of my special member functions, which is the constructor here. And we call this a delegate constructor here. OK, so while our object is constructing. So I could just call entity, for instance, here. And entity here, which will be called when this object is constructing, will do the initialization for us. OK, so let me go ahead and get rid of this. And if I run it, then I'll get our object here. Let's go ahead and make the initialization do something more interesting here with um, X and Y. I know we're zero initializing them, but just to show that it's actually called here, maybe set these values to seven and five. And there we go. So we can see that entity was called. It calls init and then our entity will be assigned the actual name here. And now when creating these constructors, I don't have to also remember to call init or make a decision about it here. I'm delegating that work to some other constructor here. OK, so let's carry this a little bit further and create a few other constructors. So let's create one. Maybe I want to be able to create my entities here also with X and Y positions here. So int X and int Y. OK, so um, this time, though, I don't want them to uh, have a name here. OK, so let's just go ahead and set the x equal to whatever x is. And the y equal to whatever y is here. And then I can go ahead and make sure that the right defaults are set here for my name by calling the appropriate constructor here. OK, so let's actually this time go down here and just set our x and our y maybe to 9 and 27. I'll compile this. Compile is fine. And well, we get 9 and 27 from our constructor. And it calls our delegate constructor here, which does the right thing with initialization, which sets up the name to some default value or whatever work that we want to do here. OK. Now, 
even better than this, now that I'm doing the right thing in this sort of default constructor, I could just, in fact, in theory, just get rid of this init function. So all of a sudden I have one less function here. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. And I'll just paste this in here. We don't need to call init. And again, you know, maybe we're doing some other work here where we're computing some algorithm or whatever. And I can clean up my class here. Okay. Because again, I'm moving my work into the constructor. So this is something that we haven't seen yet where I have a actual function call here in the what we used to have as the member initializer list as demonstrated here in our default constructor. Now, a question you might have is, can I mix these together? Can I make this constructor call and do this sort of initialization here? So for example, for entities that were constructed with an X and a Y, could I initialize this uh, name to something else here? For instance, if I try putting a comma here, name, and maybe just, you know, test here. Will this work here? Well, let's go ahead and try compile. Well, in this case, I'm getting an error. So maybe I did it in the wrong order. Let's go ahead and try again. And I can try name and, you know, test again. And put a comma there. Again, this isn't going to be allowed here. So I can only call the actual delegate constructor here and not mix it with initializing member variables. But of course, I can initialize my member variables here in this list as demonstrated. Okay. And again, why are we doing this? Well, the goal was so that we didn't repeat ourselves with our code. We're able to leverage other constructors that we've written. And this, again, can be a much cleaner way than having to remember to call the right init function or copy and paste code from one constructor to another. So leveraging delicate constructors in this way can help us write some better C++ code. All right, folks, so I hope this was an interesting lesson for you and expose something new that you can do in C++ and this ability that you'll often see in other code bases where other constructors are leveraged. And again, this is usually to prevent you from repeating code, which if you, like me, have ever repeated your code and done some copying and pasting, it makes your code much harder to update and so on. And again, we by using a delicate constructor, we're copying um, or rather leveraging the right code by using a function that's already been written in the right place. Oftentimes having these sort of initialization functions that could be called outside of the scope of when our actual objects being constructed could be potentially dangerous. So again, this can be a little bit of a better way to write or rather have pathways for creating objects in C++. So I hope you found this interesting. I hope, again, this is a good lesson for you. If you didn't understand it, go ahead and comment below. Give this video a like if you didn't know about this technique, and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of our future lessons. All right, thanks for your time, folks, and we'll see you soon in the next lesson.